Now, Mishnah begins with the words, Kol Yisrael, all of Israel, have a share in the world to come. It's based on a Pasuk where it says, Ameich Kulam Tzadikim, your nation are all Tzadikim, La'olam Yirshu Eretz, they shall inherit the land forever, Neitzer Matai, they're a branch of my plantings, Maise Yodai, they're the work of my hands, Lispar, I take pride in them. So, the literal translation of these words are every single Jew will have a share in the world to come. The reason why this is questionable, and is there also a reason given, being that every Jew was created by Hashem, and is Hashem's, or, or, I mean, everything was created by Hashem, but this is somewhere Hashem says, this is specifically my work, my planting, I've invested myself in this in the Shama. As a result of that, just like Hashem is eternal, so what Hashem sort of invests himself in is also eternal. But how does this, how could you reconcile this with the Mishnah, and also is brought down in Rambam Mahalacha, where he gives a list of people that if you do A, B, C, D, E, F, G, a whole long list of things, you lose your share in the world to come. So how does that go together with what it says here, that everyone will have a share in the world to come? So the answer is, being that it says, call your soul, every Jew, it must be every Jew. Now, the, the first question is, what is it referring to? It says, every Jew has a share in the world to come. What is the definition of the world to come? So there are two definitions. And depending where it's written and in what context it's written, that's how we know how to define it. One definition is the world to come means Gan Eden, which means it's a spiritual world. After the soul leaves the body and goes to heaven, and that, spirit, that spiritual world is called the world to come. And there's another interpretation that the world to come is referring specifically to the times of Mashiach, when all the souls will come back into the body. And, and, and the truth is like this. When we talk about a share and a reward after the soul leaves the body, not every soul will have reward, depending on what kind of life they live. But regarding Tchis HaMesim, coming back to this world, the soul in the body, and benefiting from the times of Mashiach, that's something which every single person will be part of. And that is, when we say these words, that everyone will have Tchis HaMesim except for, it means that these are sins that in their own right take away the share, the, the privilege to have a share in the world to come. But ultimately, let's say a person did that and then does tshuva. Like the Rambam himself, after giving the long list of all the people that lost their share in the world to come, he finishes off saying, but that's only if they didn't do tshuva. If they did tshuva, even if they lived a full life of 120 years without tshuva, and the last moment they did tshuva, then everything is canceled and they have a share in the world to come. So that's number one. Number two, even if a person didn't do tshuva, the soul goes through a certain process after it leaves this world, and that process refines it, and as a result of that, it then is enabled to also have a share in the world to come. And not only that, but it says that when people do things in this world for uh, elevation of the soul in that world, even if they were lacking and missing something, what we do in this world has a tremendous effect on the soul in that world to make up for whatever it is that they lost out on. So therefore, ultimately, everyone will have a share in the world to come. The only question is, how are you going to get there? So I guess those who are tzaddikim, they'll get there in a very smooth way. Those who are not, either they'll have to do tshuva, or someone will give tzedakah for them, or learn Torah for them, or do mitzvahs in their merit, and what about people that don't have anybody in their family that would do it for them? So it says there could be even someone out of the family, and sometimes Sadiqim will do it for them, which means ultimately Hashem will see to it that no Jew will be left out of the process of Chiesa Mesa. Everybody will be there. And that's what these words mean, being that Hashem is eternal, and he invested this eternal aspect of himself in every Jew, like it says in Tanya, Hashem blew into us a breath of life. I remember from Tanya, what does blowing mean? When you blow, it comes from your inner depth. Everything in the world is created through speech. And speech is something which is external. But blowing is something which you take more energy out of yourself. It's a metaphor saying that Hashem invested his inner self in the soul. And as a result of that, just like Hashem is eternal, every person is eternal. But clearly, 
these words mean literally every single yid will have tchis amesim. Let's remember Hashem is the epitome of kindness. Hashem is the epitome of compassion. And Hashem, unfortunately, people have this image of Hashem, which is really a non-Jewish image. Like he's fire and brimstone, and he's ready to come down at you, and God forbid, uh, who knows what, enjoying taking revenge and beating you up because of what you did wrong is just the opposite. Just the opposite. Hashem is full. And even if chas v'shalom, a person has to go through something it's part of Hashem's kindness. He has us going through something so we should be able to receive and get to a higher and a better place.